Thank you very much for this nice introduction. So I thought I'd say that I'd present two cases in which the plaque coverage capabilities of the sea guard stent and the safety of uh, proximal protection are highlighted at their best. But actually, the two cases that I'm going to present fall perfectly in the discussion we've had until now. So these are my disclaimers. And uh, the first case is a stroke patient with a complete occlusion of the ICA. He was a 57-year-old male, a heavy smoker with uh, many risk factors. He was admitted to our emergency room with an NIH 11, left hemiparesis and dysarthria. The findings on the emergency CT scan were a complete occlusion of the right carotid artery at its origin and uh, lesions of the intracranial vessels. So our neurologist treated him with an endovenous thrombolysis with RTPA, and he was uh, subsequently transferred to a second level center for a catheter thrombectomy. When he came back to our hospital, as usual, we found, not as usual, we don't usually find a residual 80% stenosis of the ICA. Uh, so uh, we performed an MRI scan, and he had a single big lesion in the right hemisphere with possible bleeding. So we decided not to treat this patient acutely, but to wait until this lesion was stable, and that lasted, it took, required three weeks. So he was retransferred from the uh, rehab he was in for treatment, and this is the procedure we planned, uh, a right femoral short uh, uh, introducer axis, a balloon, balloon guiding catheter to obtain the proximal clamping, and we plan to deploy an, a 9 by 40 sea guard stent. So Tommaso, here you, Tommaso, can I stop you there for a sec? Um, did you, did you, it's over here, Richard. Uh, hello. Um, <laughs> You went straight to stenting because that's your normal way of treating these patients, or were there particular features which uh, favoured stent in this case? Um, in my mm, in my practice, I prefer to stent. Okay. It's more comfortable for the patient. He's already got his issues, so uh, perform a surgery, a long post-op, uh, maybe hospital stay. This, uh, you'll, you'll, at the end, I would say he was discharged on day one, so he could could go back to his rehab institution. Okay. So uh, here you can see the uh, access to the external carotid artery. We usually don't perform that. I don't like to mess up in the bifurcation, but I needed the extra stability and the CT scan had shown a nice clean bifurcation. So we, we introduced the uh, O35 wire in the external. Here you can see the flow inversion in the internal carotid artery that will protect certainly protect the brain from any other embolization. Uh, after we had acquired the brain protection, we advanced the O14 wire in the internal carotid and released the Seaguar 9 by 40 stent that uh, adapted perfectly onto the vessel wall. And in this case, uh, a post dilation with a uh, 5 by 30 balloon was uh, necessary. This is the final angio, a nice patent internal carotid artery, and the patient was discharged back to his rehab on day one. Tommaso, can I ask a question? Certainly, I'm here, I'm where are you? On the other side. Uh, just a, do you sometimes predilate these lesions, or were you too scared because you had proximal protection? Uh, if I if I have to, in this case, I thought the stent, the it was a soft plaque. So the uh, outer expansion of the stent would guarantee me the, the sufficient lumen to retrieve the uh, deployment yeah, system. Yeah, fair point, thanks. Okay, this is even more controversial because it's a floating thrombus in the ICA. Very young man, 49 years old, with an MTH of FR mutation. He had a TIA one hour uh, with left paresis and dysarthria. When he was admitted to our uh, emergency room, he was or already okay. This is the uh, pre-op uh, CT scan in which you can see a nice and long tail of this floating thrombus that was menacing to go to the brain directly. But as per protocol, uh, ah, sorry, we performed an emergency MRI scan that <coughs> showed multiple small lesions, the biggest of whom was 1.5 centimeters. And uh, so Tommaso, we... Tommaso, Richard here. Can I stop you for a moment? Can I ask you, please, sir, would you treat this patient with a procedure or would you manage them medically? Floating thrombus, 
single episode of symptoms and a young man with this mutation. Uh, <laughs> intervene. I'd be worried about that clot uh, dislodging. He definitely intervened, so he's on your side. No, but we didn't intervene immediately. We okay. actually uh, anticoagulated the patient and put him on a dead bull antiplatelet. But 16 hours later, he had a new dysarthria episode. So we then decided to intervene, and the carotid stenting procedure was planned with a femoral axis, eight French, a balloon guiding catheter for proximal protection and flow inversion. Obviously, the ECA engagement to position the uh, guiding catheter was uh, strongly uh, contraindicated, and we planned to deploy a very long stent. That's because the lesion was quite long, and I wanted to be absolutely sure to comprehend the, de the tail of the floating thrombus within the stent. And uh, sorry they take the images aren't as good as the first case, but we don't always have the same technician. So this is the uh, protection and the uh, access to the ICA with the 014 wire, the stent deployment. And here you can see how I went well above the end of the thrombus. And on the right-hand side, you can see the stents one deployed. In this case, I didn't even perform a post dilation because I had a very nice lumen. The thrombus is obviously soft, and it was deployed. It was sent away by the stent itself. The pay, this is the MRI scan we performed as a control, and it showed absolutely no new DWI lesions in the hemisphere. And the patient was discharged on day two, uneventfully. Can I probably interrupt? You? Thank you for your uh -huh. attention. Barbara right. is asking a question. I was, uh, I, was, I was trying to understand why surgery was not an option for this young patient. Uh, in this case, I, uh, as it, in the first cross case, the it was my preference, my preference. In this case, it was uh, the, the patient didn't want surgery on his neck, and we felt that the manipulation of the bifurcation with such... Uh, the, that was six millimeters, the tail of the thrombus. You could prepare the carotid very high without touching the bifurcation. You were not concerned about passing all your catheters and sheets? When we have a backflow <laughs> flow protection, a backflow cerebral not. protection, I'm not very concerned about this, okay. no, actually not. Thank you very much, Tomasa. Great cases. Merci beaucoup. Sit there. You, you can join them, of course you can. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker of this uh, Inspire MD symposium, which is Piotr Muselek. Probably doesn't need any introduction anymore. Everybody who was in the Life in the Box case yesterday already saw what he's capable of. And he'll be talking to us about, you can go up on stage, uh, the clicker. I think Tomasso took the clicker. Tomasso, would you mind bringing the clicker? Uh, sea Guardian's pivotal ID trial with the Seaguard Micronet covered sense, best in class. Piotr, we're really curious about the results. Thank you so much, Isabel. I'm not sure why you put me amongst the industry. That's, you know, I'm primarily a physician, not an industrialist, but I will share my experience uh, uh, as a physician. So what Piotr, would you mind going up to the stage? You don't need to be shy. Well, I'm Thanks. not that shy. I just felt more, you know, I could see more people there. Uh, so, uh, clinical trials update, uh, where we are these days with uh, this uh, design. So, I think it's important to look at the presence you get, and what Isabel gave us in the uh, bag of PVI is this issue of vascular news. And I opened it, and what I saw is that there's going to be, on page one, some technological advance that will completely change our practice. I thought, well, that's good. Uh, they also say that innovation in vascular surgery has to balance the progress uh, in uh, devices with patient sa safety. And I thought, well, that is also good. Because the micronet covered anti embolic stand, and this is the most open cell uh, frame, as you can see here. This is something that Dr. Schneider was asking about yesterday. Give me the most open and give me the most close. And then here you see uh, the uh, outside the sock of the micronet that has the pore size of about uh, what you have in the protection filters. So the most open and the most close. And I thought, well, this is what answers the innovation. And this is today, in fact, some technological improvement that is completely changing our clinical practice. So I could finish my talk here, but I think you want to see some data. So let's look at the data. 
So this is again the design. The design shows normal uh, hearing. Uh, this is the data from uh, Christian Visgott in Germany, who uh, made some detailed examination of the properties of the stand, mechanical properties. You can see very good apposition that is related to the open cell, very open cell design, and uh, the feasibility of complete lesion reconstruction. When you look at clinical trials gov, there is a number, large number of clinical trials. Some are listed here, some more are listed here. And totally, we have evidence in about 5,000 patients uh, today. Let's start with RCT. This is for Richard. Uh, so in fact, the stand was tested against the CREST uh, study design in a study that was uh, powered for the primary endpoint, which is DWI cerebral injury. And here is what the study showed. On your uh, left, you, this is a logarithmic scale. In red, the CREST study stand. CREST is still what is defining Barbara's guidelines. Uh, and below in green is the individual lesions with the C-guard stat. What you have on the right is the profound uh, reduction of embolic load to the brain, whether you look at the lesion size or total load per ipsilateral hemisphere. So yes, we have level one evidence. And uh, if you look at 12-month clinical data, you see there is indication of also clinical benefit. In fact, this is the only today second generation mesh stand with RCT evidence. Two meta-analysis, one was mentioned yesterday and also today, I just skipped through that, uh, 70,000 patients uh, together, 30-day stroke, death stroke MI, 12-month Ipsy stroke, 12-month Ipsy restenosis, the best device. You can compare it against open, closed cell stents, that doesn't uh, matter, the result is the same. Lack of a mesh stent class effect really in this meta-analysis. Comparison to surgery would be of more interest uh, to a lot of people here. So what we did is we took CA data from recent major trials and also uh, data published data from the VQI. You can see superiority in terms of 30-day stroke, 12-month uh, Ipsy stroke, 12-month restenosis. FDID trial, this is what many people consider the highest quality of evidence. Uh, the trial has been recently completed, 316 patients in 25 sites in Europe and the US. Uh, the, uh, look at the population, 25% symptomatic patients, so not asymptomatic patients, over 40% diabetics. This tells you about complexity of the patients in this study, both type of embolic protection device use. Death stroke MI, less than 1% at 30 days. We're not treating easy patients with this device. We have seen some examples from Tommaso. This is another patient here with a thrombus containing lesion, full endovascular reconstruction. You can see also that is documented on IVUS. Now when we look at one year data from the C. Guardians trial, uh, the, you, the, the primary endpoint is 30 day death stroke MI plus any ipsilateral stroke by one year, less than 2% on ITT analysis, target lesion vascularization less than 1%. So uh, if you look at the, this data in the context, this is the history before the uh, Guardians FDA IDE trial. You can see 0.95%. So this is the best clinical outcomes ever in the carotid stenting trial. Uh, that is for uh, something for Richard that I, I always hope to have more chance to discuss with him, uh, ACST2 CEA, so recent. Uh, contemporary CA in asymptomatic patients, significantly better outcomes. I know I'm taking patients from two different trials, but you have only asymptomatic patients in ACST2, and you have a high proportion of symptomatic, a significant proportion of symptomatic patients in C Guardians FDA ID trial. This is a slide for uh, Dr. Schneider. I've put here also the TCAR data from Roadster 2. TCAR with optimized, you know, you heard from Nacho, fantastic dynamic uh, proximal protection, but uh, first generation open cell stent 3.18, Seagardians transfemoral carotid stenting with Seagard neuroprotective stent, less than 1% death stroke MI at 30 days. Uh, if this is the 12-month endpoint, also the best that we have today. So transradial, people ask, it was part of discussion yesterday, is it feasible, not feasible? Yes, it is feasible. This is some examples from trials. Here the right, here the left, carotid treated using the transradial approach. Transcarotid, the combination of dynamic flow reversal and the anti uh, neuroprotective stent, top t -card plus c -card. this is what we have called top guard. The results with Isabel and Ralph have been recently published, less than 1% uh, complications at 30 days. 
Aneurysm and exclusion healing is another important direction. This is young, inoperable patient, two overlapping sea guards, immediate result, and this is the stent fully healed at six months. Advanced imaging is important. You can see here in the middle on your left, the example of micronet protection. Long-term outcomes, more and more signals. I get attacked from both sides and finishing. <laughs> uh, 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 is uh, also a good result without any, any stent-related issues. You asked me yesterday, Isabel, what I'm afraid of. So what I'm afraid of is bad carotid artery stenting in, in, in not, not properly or not perfectly done procedures. This is data from Paradigm 500, routine lesion preparation, post dilate op dilatation optimization, 0% stent thrombosis, 0.37% instant with stenosis at 12 months. This is collab verified and externally monitored. Yes, Pre dilation sir. can be performed. Yes, I am finishing. Post dilation is important, as you can see here. Take balloons more than five in most of, the, of your patients. So this is important. No device is immune to bad cast, bad operator. Do not be thrombogenic. We are making a huge impact in stroke. This data is available. The stand today is a protector. A cast is not the same as another cast. The stand has documented important advantages. I want to leave you with this slide. Thanks to the Krakow team, I think we have a new standard of care. And indeed, yes, there is some technological <laughs> advance. Thanks. I'm now giving this back to you.